Hello and welcome back to the Peak Results Academy podcast. I'm your host, Rich Fournier, and today we have with us Brian Bradley, who's the Vice President and Brand Development of Special Programs at the Egoscu Method. Now, Brian's been on a mission for over 25 years, helping millions of people learn how to live healthier, pain-free lives and achieve complete fitness. A frequent speaker at industry events, he presents, consults, and conducts training with corporations, organizations, and nonprofits on the topics of chronic pain, healthy living, and high level performance. Now, his roster, his clients include the Tony Robbins Group of Companies, Bulletproof Radio, the Young Presidents Organization, the, the Seattle Study Club, and the NFL. Now, he's been studying true biomechanics and human anatomy using the Egoscu method for more than 25 years. He's a posture, pain, and performance coach. I'm super excited to have him with us today. So stay tuned. You're going to learn so much about posture and why you need to really consider changing how you function day to day to achieve peak results in your life. So stay tuned. Have you ever wondered why some people thrive in all areas of their life? Welcome to the Peak Results Academy podcast with your host, Rich Fournier. Each week, we interview industry experts who consistently dominate in the fields of health, business, and beyond. Our mission is to share their personal struggles and strategies so that you can create your own peak results. Welcome to the Academy. Hey everybody, Rich Forney here for the Peak Results Academy podcast, and in this episode, I am super excited to have a very, very special guest. Um, He's involved with one of my personal favorite people in the entire world, the Tony Robbins Organization, but he is the Vice President of Brand Development for the Egoscu Method. Hopefully, I pronounced that correctly. Um, His clients include the Tony Robbins Companies, Bulletproof Radio, the Young Presidents Organization, the Seattle Study Club, and the NFL. Now, Brian has been studying true biomechanics and human anatomy using the Egoscu method for more than 25 years. He is a posture, pain, and performance coach. And I could keep going on and on and on. Brian, I am so excited to have you here because you know this podcast is all about creating a peak result in someone's life. And you help people do that. Can you explain? What is the Egoscu method? Yeah, let me start off with uh, thank everybody for listening and thank everybody for listening to that bio that I just sent you. Um, I copied and pasted from our website and if that's what I have up there, I have some work to do. I'm gonna go back and make that a little shorter, a little less about, it's all about me, you know, stuff like that. I kind of butchered it, so. No, you did a very good job with it. But let's start off with something like, um, you know, the NHL, the NFL, the Major League Baseball, all that kind of stuff. All of those things are, Um, the people that we know and the people that we miss on TV going, where's the NFL right now? I'd love to be able to watch some baseball, some football, some basketball in this time when I'm at home. Um, The Agoscu method is based on no matter what athlete level you are at any athletic level, no matter what job you're in, no matter what contract you've signed, mother nature just kicked you in the butt and you're at home just like we all are why we're doing this to this crowd that we're talking to your clients and people that are interested in this is I have a absolute interest in taking someone from a postural standpoint where they think their body's at full potential and then getting them to realize with no judgment that they're not even close. And I use these blueprints from the Agoscu method from what Pete Agoscu introduced me to over 30 years ago. Uh, 1991 was the year we hooked up first and I started realizing that what I knew from university training was that much and it was memorization and it was just like the allopathic medicine world now which is not their fault the good doctors are doing their job but their thought process is if this shows pathologically then this is the medication route that we take people yeah um, and we know that doesn't work in the long run especially as it relates to the chronic pain ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, ears, digestive issues, lymphatic issues, um, now lung tissue issues. To get air into the lower parts of the lungs takes the diaphragm to basically get out of the way and reverse itself, sucking in negative pressure and filling it with positive air. We'll get through that as long as you want to talk today. But the Agoscu method was born in 1971. 
when Pete Agoscu got out of the Marine Corps and finally said, enough is enough. My injuries are not in my head. They're actual physical problems. And to an angry Marine in chronic pain, your pains in your head really didn't go over too well. So luckily he was unarmed and uh, handled it pretty well emotionally. We moved on and we went into the clinic setting in the 80s, uh, which then turned into a guy who has a political science degree, Marine Corps major, but because he had so much symptom tied to him, he could sympathize and empathize with every customer who's been told you have to live with it. Your hip pain is because you're sitting too much. Really? Why is the hip pain on one side and not the other? I'm sitting on both. Hey, your knee hurts because you're 55. Really? How old's your other knee? Um, you have plantar fasciitis in the morning. It's like walking on glass. Why? And why when I put my hands up like this and pull my elbows back, does my symptom decrease? Something in the mechanics of how the whole body system works. So my job is to get you to a point where you self-discover, give us the chance to coach, and, and we're gonna do some exercises today that you guys can just have. That'll be coming from Peak Results. That's their gift to you. But what I'm talking about after that are the people who are serious about Peak Results and moving to that next level. I'll give you some options to go to from there, but that's gonna be up to you. So today I just wanna provide information. I wanna value add to your podcast. Um, I loved you since the first minute we were introduced. Uh, your energy is great. And, um, you know, I do have the luxury of picking and choosing who I want to kind of support on these kind of things. Um, but this was the right call. So I appreciate you very much. I, I, the level that you're running in is, um, that's very rare air. And I appreciate you spending some time with us today because a lot of my listeners, uh, and my clients, um, are in the real estate world. Um, and they're, most days they're hunched over a computer. Most days they're hunched over in their car. You know, my kids constantly say to me, dad, like you look like an old man because I'm, I'm hunched over all the time. And how much, like when your body's in that bad position, how much does it affect your performance? Because you showed me a picture the last time we talked about an NFL player, the MRI scan, and after changing his posture or working with him, he had a massive shift or change in the cerebral spinal fluid in his brain. Am I getting that correct? Correct. That 100%. 100%. you blew me away with that, and I and I just want you to to talk about this a little bit. Well, let's go to you're in Canada, yeah. We are in Canada. So we talk about uh, hockey is now starting to hit the market with yep. big time head injuries. The guy that said, the guy that did that documentary Ghost or something like that, where he was talking about that, really bringing it to light. Look, so many people want to blame the NFL for this. And I promise you, it's not the NFL's fault. Now, could there have been something down the road where they had a headache? Uh, the guy had a TBI maybe 30 years ago, and the techniques weren't as good to be able to pull that guy off the field. It was, how do you feel, Joe? Yeah, put me back in. Okay, it's a different time. Don't blame the time just because our medical didn't keep up with injury, but now medical's caught up with injury. Athletes have caught up with injury going, I don't feel right, I'm not going back in. They're starting to get very smart about that. Well, a TBI is very traumatic brain injury is, is, is right away, my son plays division one soccer. So these micro concussions and serious head ones, they pull them off. I refereed the sport for 12 years because I couldn't stand soccer when I, I came from US football. And it was like watching paint dry 90 minutes with one goal drove me crazy. So once you, once you learn the spirit of the game, I freaking love soccer, right? Because of the whole spirit of the game. Now I'm addicted. But what it taught me was looking at the athlete differently from my aspect as a, as the athletic training background, as the exercise phys background, the rehab background, I'm looking at it from a much different lens now than what I did coming out of university. Because as an athletic trainer coming out, I would have run onto the field, gone like this, gone like this, doc, we need you to take a look, blah, 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 blah. Well, now I look at it and go, same thing. They can do whatever they want on their end medically. My job is to say, how does their body align prior to the injury? And definitely once they get the hit, their body goes to this. Yep. The dark room, no noise. Uh, my head's unstable, blah, 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 blah. My job is to forget the brain get them back to this side view posture and this front view posture, which I'll zoom in on later. Yep. 
reestablish a kinetic chain from the ankle to the hip to the shoulder through the knee into the spine and into the head so you're vertically aligned not looking like this person in purple over here all cattywampus so i'm not telling your listener to sit up straight i'm really telling them to take a different body to sitting because by the way sitting's not going anywhere right it's here to stay i've done it all day today. <laughs> now you're sitting in the same chair all day long because you're in the same house all day long and if this goes on for another 12 weeks we better be ready to attack not the chair but how about instead of saying i have a three thousand dollar chair that i just bought and i have a two dollar ass how about we go let's give you a three dollar or three thousand dollar butt by changing your pelvic tilt and get you into a $2 chair. And it doesn't matter because you're taking a much different athlete into the chairs, the sport of sitting. So that cerebral spinal fluid that you saw, the difference on the brain tissue, no matter what the sport is, boxing, football, hockey, baseball, you know, whatever. You take the right aligned athlete, their recovery can be faster, can be more succinct and, um, more focused because the cerebral spinal fluid can pulse, clean, nourish, rather than pulse, get stuck, then pressurize the brain, and we think the brain's swelling. When really it could be the pressure being pushed because of the increase in fluid. And look, I know just enough to be dangerous about this, but I will tell you that the posture alignment is the number one foundation that you have to change when something like that happens. But not everybody can relate to this because they'll go, well, I'm 55 and I'm not really going to be having TBIs anymore. That's right. Well, I raced downhill mountain bikes for years and I can tell you I've had a couple of them, right? But now I play the great sport of table tennis and it's much safer. So if we can get to a point where I'm, I'm having a paddle in my hand going, okay, here comes a ball and I load up my right side and then I twist and then my paddle comes through. I throw a football, my hip comes through, then my arm comes through. Now I'm throwing a spiral right where it should be. It's when my hip quits working and I start throwing, I start swinging, I start punching with a shoulder doing the work instead of the hip. That's a different story, which is what, you know, you and I talked, maybe did I talk to you about Conor McGregor? You did. You showed me uh, some pictures of that. Okay. So I'll show you the picture that I don't like to share the other, I can't share the picture that, you know, just when he and I working together, but I got him 12 days out from the cowboy fight. But this is not the cowboy fight that we're talking about. This is the fight that he had prior to that with Habib. And we all know the result where, tell me who won that fight. Right. Well, just from a breathing perspective. Yeah. And that's why one of the smartest athletes in the world that I've ever had the privilege of working with, and I didn't know what to expect when I walked into UFC, right? But that guy said, let me see that picture again. I get it. Makes sense. What do I do? Not let's keep talking and sell me. It was, I get it. It was unfair in that fight. Unfair. Because Habib went in with a body here. You went in with a body here. How do you, how do you, how do you get through five minute rounds like that when your diaphragm doesn't fire and you're shutting down half your lung ability? Right. Impossible. So for those of you sitting at home affected by the COVID-19 or infected by the COVID-19. Either way, you're affected. I'm sitting at home in my house. I've never sat in a chair so long in my life. But I do my exercises to get me out of it so my lung tissue now can actually move more congruently with my diaphragm being the, the major stabilizer in breathing. So none of this can happen, I promise you, on a permanent end or an effective end unless the base of the movement, which is the pelvis, is the driver. So for example, if I'm playing golf and I'm here, and I take my arms back and I'm swinging the golf club, versus because we're talking to real estate guys, you guys are excellent golfers. If my pelvis comes with me and I'm here, now my pelvis becomes the mover to bring me back and then as I get up here, my arm externally rotates, and here comes the rest of the swing. And as you can see, this comes first, then my arms come through the ball. That goes for punching, that goes for anything. Which why I say you can buy that $3,000 chair but put a $2 butt in it, meaning your posture alignment is off, 
So is, is it fair to say that posture can affect energy levels and cognition and how we think? A hundred percent. In fact, let's do this. When I get you up to do the exercises, don't let me start them without taking you through the closed eye balance test and the closed eye emotional test. Okay. Because there's a massive, there's a difference in the two, but we're going to, we're going to do some stuff with some thoughts and some colors and some feelings. And then we're going to run through three exercises for your upper back. And you're going to go, are you kidding me? Like, this is, this is not a joke. Like that emotion didn't have the same effect on me as it did before. Okay. Let's do it. You want to do it now? Why not? Like you brought it up. Let's do it. I agree. So remember our goal. This is, is not scripted in any way. We're just going for it. We're well, COVID-19 is not scripted. Right. Uh, this is, I'm shooting out of my garage. So, so this, this, that's probably what I look like right there. Okay. So this is 90% of my customer base coming in. Increased right. rounding of the shoulder, kyphosis, yep. because the pelvis is so far out of position. And then you're going to hear from your trainer, you have glute amnesia. Your glutes don't work. Yeah. They're not wrong. I go back to him and say this, okay, personal trainer, just a question for you. Cause you told me that my, my client here, Rich said, Rich told me that you told him his glutes don't fire in the golf swing. Well, yeah. Why don't they fire? Well, he just has to train his glutes. No, 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 no. Has nothing to do with the glute. It has to do with where's your body adapting and compensating and allowing your glute to stay non-firing, non-facilitated. Now let's turn it on and change that upper back position around, which is what we're gonna go through now. So equate whatever sport you wanna do, running, biking, swimming, sitting at the computer, uh, dentistry. Dentists are, they're in some serious trouble because they're bent over and rounded in one direction all day. Yep. I had 3,000 of them on a podcast last week. Absolutely, the, the feedback from that was, COVID-19 is not a negative thing because it's finally given me some time to take care of me. Right. Okay, so. Let's get everybody to stand up. And I'm going to use this white background, if you don't mind, a little bit more because I'm, you know, dressed in what I'm dressed in. All right. It'll be easier to see. You get to see the rest of my garage. It's awesome. That's all right. Okay. So, like in this position, I want you to just stand normally. So my feet, if they were out here like this, yep. you just them like that. Yeah. Let me throw my glasses on. The exercise, during the exercise, I'm going to have you stand with your feet pointed the way that I need them pointed. Okay. Okay, so just relax, shake it out right now, and close your eyes. And with your eyes closed, just take a breath, shake it out, and I want you to think about where your body weight is from left to right, which foot feels like it's carrying more weight than the other, and then think about each foot. Do I have more weight in my heels, or do I have more weight in the balls of my feet? Or are they even? Are they both in the heels? Or are they in the balls of the feet? So where are yours, Rich? More weight on the left side. Um, more on the outside of my foot, so pronated. And by, oh, and by saying outside instead of outside, you, are you spelling that differently? Yeah, or? Canadian. <laughs> so now, back up just a little bit if you can. I want to see your hand position. Yeah, just relax right there. So even with people with cameras, or on, uh, you guys open up your eyes and take a look at Rich. Look at the difference in his hand position on his left versus his right. Almost like I could read your watch and tell you what time it is because the hand is rounded over like this, but the right one's not. Okay. So take a look at him. Look down and see if you can see that. So now, this is the kind of evaluation somebody who's listening to this would go to a mirror and go, where am I? Don't try to stand up straight. Give me a natural stance. Keep your eyes closed now. Where's your body weight, front to back, left to right? Now comes the fun part too. Think about where, let's take ourselves through this emotional thing. Think of the worst thing, and it could be right now, emotionally, financially, mentally, relationship-wise, when you were a kid, I don't care what it is. I'm not gonna go into it because I'm not qualified, right? Yep. But let's think of the worst case scenario that you've ever been through. Give it a feeling. Like, what's it feel like? You know, give it some words. Okay, this sucks. I get it. Yeah, it did suck. It was last year when I had some major issues. Okay, great. Now give it a color. Black. Okay? So everybody listening, give that emotion a color. 
and just keep it to yourselves. So now open up your eyes. So now what we have is we have where's my body weight. We possibly have where's my hand position because I looked at it. And here's this crappy emotion that made me feel this way and I gave it a color. Okay. Those are three of the four that we're going to go through. Yep. Now the last thing is this. Turn your feet dead straight. And when I say straight, I mean fist width apart between your big toes. Yep. And I want you five degrees slightly pigeon toed at the big toe. So when somebody says to me their feet are straight and they're kind of flared out like this, that's not straight. It's got to feel weird. Like, wow, okay, that's weird. But what it does is it, it traps where the leg bone sits in your hip. Okay, it feels weird, yeah. Now, here's what you're going to do. And I don't show this to too many people. You're going to go like this. One, two, three. Squeeze your butt, release. Squeeze your butt, release. Squeeze your butt, release. Give it 10 times. And I want you, everybody to think which side of my butt is firing faster, more congruent, harder. Um, do they feel the same? Does it feel weak in this position? It actually hurts in the sacrum. Okay, good. Now it's a, that's part of it. Now turn your toes out 45 degrees. Okay. Now squeeze your butt muscles again. What's the difference? I don't have pain in the sacrum. So sacrum pain is gone. Yeah. The contraction from left to right could be more congruent and actually feeling more level. Yeah. Okay. Our goal is, my neighbors are driving by going, what's going on? Um, we're shooting a movie. It's New Jurassic Park. So the squeezing and releasing of the butt muscles now just tells me that, okay, it's kind of weird here and it's stressing out my SI joint, my sacrum, but when I turn my feet out, what you've actually done is shorten the glute muscle and given it an advantage to fire better, which right. is why a lot of people walk like this. Right. I'm not gonna ask them to straighten their feet up. We're gonna ask them to solve the reason why their feet are turned out in the first place. Right. So that's what these exercises are gonna do. So now, Turn your feet back to straight again. Remember, it's five degrees pigeon-toed, and that's where they're going to remain for these three exercises. You can come through. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, got it. Okay, so now I'm going to work off this white uh, thing so you guys can see. So ideally, remember, your feet are straight. Yeah. Dead straight. That'll trap your hip, and we're going to wake up what we call the on switch or the, uh, the psoas, which is really the, the circuit breaker for all of your posture to sit in the right place. A lot of people have short, tight, weak hip flexors, and they're making their massage therapist job much harder. <clears throat> now, with your feet straight, I want you to put your hands in a, in a fist like this. Yeah. And I broke this. I abolished this ligament so it's, you can see that it doesn't close. So you're here, but you're going to open it up to here. So now what's visible is the palm and the fingernails. Yeah, just like that. They're going to stay just like that for the first two exercises. Keep them just like that, nice and tight, where the tendons, you can see them right there. Yeah. Now, in that position, arms down to the side, thumbs forward. When I ask you to pull your shoulder blades together, you're not going up and you're not going to lean back. I'm going to ask you to do this. You're going to go pull my shoulder blade down and back to get it right here, pinch it together. So you're going to go here and then go hold that when they squeeze together. Yep. Arms out to the sides. And now circle forward 40 times. Don't let your arms come up here. Keep them straight out. That's why you have your shoulder blades pinned together. And if you moved your feet, get them back to straight. That is the key to the entire exercise. Okay, so do, you're doing that all together? What do you mean, buddy? So I'll just bring my shoulder blades back and then... Up, get your thumbs pointed at me and just do what I'm doing right now. 40 circles forward with my shoulder blades pinned together the entire time. It actually hurts in the back. <laughs> just keep that held. <clears throat> I would venture to argue what you just said. I want you to differentiate between the word hurt and something's waking up or working. Fair enough. Because remember, nobody wants to, especially somebody in pain, they don't want to hurt more. So they instantly, they go, I feel something, it must be bad. Don't right. judge it like that. Right. Now go palms up in that same hand position. Yep, circle shoulders down and back and circle up and back now, 40 times. Turn those thumbs back and you'll notice that your left one doesn't wanna go. How are your feet, are they straight? Yep, perfectly straight. Good. 
it's um i don't think i've uh yeah i definitely feel it in my mid my that those the rhomboids area area yeah between the shoulder blades yeah. okay now down hands in the same position put it against your temple like this yeah yeah and now i want you to keep the thumbs down and just close it Come on, touch them. And then open it up behind you. Keep going, and open and close, and I want about 30 of those. Get that look off your face, you're not giving birth. <laughs> I have zero range of motion. Now, keep your head still, don't start leaning back. Try to touch those elbows together behind you too. Make sure you're pulling back, yes. Give me 10 more. Remember, we have a goal with these exercises, and all of them are focused at the action at the shoulder creates a reaction at the hip. When my wife's editing this, she's gonna be laughing her ass off. That's what wives do. We are comedy for them. <laughs> okay, take a break for a second. Now, keep your feet straight. Yep. Interlace your fingers together. Yep. Push your palms away. Elbows straight. Take that straight up over your head. But listen to me. Don't start leaning back. Only go as far as your shoulders will take you. Drop the shoulders a little bit and look up at your hands with your elbows locked out. Don't tilt your head back that far. Maybe half that. Yeah, there. Keep that held. Let your stomach hang. Especially, I will tell you this, especially females, let your stomach go during this exercise because so many people have told females to suck and tuck their stomach in for the last 30 years. It's a joke. Right. It's actually keeping me in business. Yep, elbows straight. You've got 15 seconds. I would have worn my yoga pants. I didn't want to see that. No, no one wants to see that right now. Okay, drop your arms. Now just shake it out, walk your feet out, take a walk around the room a little bit if you have to. Yep. And now just relax standing again, don't straighten your feet up, put them wherever they wanna go. Yep. Okay, just stand there for a second. Now from a visible standpoint, the crowd looking at you says, hey, his left hand is not coming as rounded as it was before. I can only see half your watch now versus the full face of your watch before. So it was the like that before? Shoulder, the shoulder is moving the hand back to closer to where it should be. Hmm. With your eyes closed now, let's go through these tests. Where's your body weight, left to right? What's different? Where's your body weight, front to back? What's different? My feet feel flatter. Yep. What else? And I feel a little bit more balanced on the weighting on both feet. Okay, <laughs> now you say to yourself, sorry? Now we go through the closed eye emotion stuff. So close your eyes, go back to that crappy thing that happened to you that you thought about 15 minutes ago. Let it, let it do what it wants. Just think about it. Wrap your head and mind and heart around it. Now give it a color. What color? I can't, well, I'm in a better mood right now. <laughs> like I actually feel like I'm in um, a happier place. I dare you to try to make it black again. Yeah, I don't feel that. I can't, I don't. Now, remember what I told you I know just enough to be dangerous? Yeah. You said it perfectly. I don't know what's going on. I, uh, I'm in a better mood right now. <clears throat> Why are you in a better mood? You tell me. And I'm, not, and I'm being completely truthful i feel um i want to smile <laughs> okay well so do your listeners right. <clears throat> look a psychological emotional action that happens in your life negative positive benign whatever the minute you add a physiological change to your mid back <laughs> Your diaphragm reacts differently. You breathe differently. You're bringing more food for the cells coming in known as oxygen. That's one scientific end of that. And I didn't make that up. I'll, if you need studies, I'll get you all the studies on that. Yeah. 
I will tell you, when you start thinking about things differently, like, wow, that didn't have control over me, it's still the same crappy situation. Right. It's like sitting in a chair that's crappy. What you did is you changed the body going to sitting, which made the chair no longer crappy. No, it's still a crappy chair, still a crappy emotion, still a crappy situation. But my reaction to it is way different because physiologically, I am no longer in a hole. I'm no longer in a hole. Is there um, a system? Like, can someone come to you guys and you do a full program for them, customized? Yeah, in fact, I was on a uh, longevity podcast yesterday and they have thousands of people and blah, blah, blah. And I thought, boy, I'm really creating a shitstorm for myself and my staff. But you know what? I'll find the time. My staff will find the time to a person says to me, Brian, I'd really like to know what's going on with me out of this. Like that was such a profound effect or, Hey, my shoulder felt so much better, but my knee was bothering me after there's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to orthopedics and limitation in your life. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is give you a more personalized way out of this. So anybody on here who wants to say, I'd like to have an evaluation on Brian on Agoscu, yep. I'll give you a way to contact us. You just put Peak Results Podcast in there. I'll know where you came from. And then we'll know what to talk about. We'll know what to do with you. It'll take five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it needs at that point. And it is on us in the sense of let's take a look. But there's going to be a lot of people on here who have already made a decision and say, uh, no, this has been so positive. I need this and God, my husband's suffering and my wife is suffering from this. My kid has this. They're stuck at home playing Xbox for 10 hours a day. How do I combat that? Well, I have that kid upstairs right now. Yeah, well, one of my, one, like my oldest child, she um, had a really, really challenging birth. And so her, her right shoulder is up like this, right? And How old is she? She just turned 13. Okay, so what a great time. And remember, unplanned, which is even better. A picture of a young woman with scoliosis. <clears throat> Sorry, the, the left yeah. is the before, and you'll see by the years, the right is after. That's a year of a young teenager saying, I'm in control of my scoliosis. Fantastic. And that's just through posture re-education? That's just through that the exercises right? that change the posture and re-educate. Okay. So think about it as the correct muscle activation at the hip, changing the mid back and allowing it to sprout out to the extremities from there. Okay. You know, I am. Um, <clears throat> what about herniated discs, stenosis, different challenges like that? Will this be able to help limit the progression on those sorts of issues? And that's a very selfish question, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a before and after, I think about a year. I think the dates are at the top. Yeah. But that's that right here is yeah. stenosis, herniated disc, bulging disc, probably spondylolisthesis, definitely stenosis, which is a, a narrowing of the canal. Yeah. And they would say, well, this guy needs surgery. Okay. Yeah. I don't talk out of it, but I say this, when surgery? It's three months from now and I'm having it. Okay. Give me the next 12 weeks yeah. to give your surgeon a better athlete going into the sport of surgery. Yeah. Let's train for it. And by the eighth, seventh, eighth week, they go, just a question. You think I could, should postpone my surgery? And I said, I know you think you should. That's why you're asking the question. But why? And they're like, I don't hurt as bad. And I said, well, you know, a disc that comes out against a nerve can actually go back in when you take away the noxious stimulus that caused it by this compression factor and degenerative discs. And I would argue the point with anybody on here. If they, if they, you know, when the medical people were going, well, you just can't do that. I understand with where you are and where you were educated, and I'm not judging it, because I was there as an athletic trainer going, uh, that is a, that's a disc versus, but what caused it? Why is there a, what if we change the movement pattern? Get rid of the noxious movement and, in, uh, implement it with a positive biomechanical movement. 
it's a whole different story. I'm, in, I'm in very intrigued. I think I'm going to, you have a whole program, I think, in place as well. Yeah, where you see us, uh, we, have two, we have two programs, which we would, it's an eight visit program or a 16 visit program. And guys, listen to me. I'm not trying to sell you on this, but I will tell you. It's well, a, I'm asking because I'm, I'm, I'm very intrigued for myself. Well, what I'll do for peak results is we'll, we'll make it instead of eight and 16, we'll make it nine and 17. And I'll, I'll also put together some COVID-19 discounts, you know, for that kind of stuff, because I don't get to see a lot of people in person anymore. But I will tell you what Zoom has done. It's really brought us, I'll tell you the benefit it's given to me is I get to see you in your house now doing the exercises with the equipment that you're using when I never was really doing that before because I never valued our online product maybe as much as we do now. So yeah. we'll put together something. You, you guys, you can roll it out. But yeah, we would see you probably close to once a week for an eight or a 16 visit program, which is really nine and 17 um, as a value add. But you're going to know after the first couple minutes of talking to us whether you want to go deeper with us or not, which is what I'm offering to go. Look, if you really want to check it out, then check it out. Let me take a look at you. Let me show you what your pictures look like. Hold it up to the screen so you can see what I'm looking at. And then it's no joke because then it's, wait a second. And remember, the coronavirus has given us the gift of time for ourselves. Mm. My car has sat longer than it's ever sat in its life. And I race cars. So these things, you know, for me to not be in a car is, right? But why? I don't really have to leave. We can do everything here. Right. Because we look at whatever time left that we have to be in self-isolation lockdown, whatever you want to call it, I would rather come out of this a better version of myself than coming into it. And, you know, where, you know, the first couple weeks, three weeks, you know, I got lazy, maybe a bit too much wine, you know, eating freely. And now I'm thinking, like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not utilizing my time appropriately. I, like you said, there's a gift here that I'm not utilizing. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if there's a such thing as too much wine. <laughs> especially if it's from a quality source. And I think there's a company out there, uh, Dry Farm Wines or something like that. We can tag them in this and say it's a gift. But um, I think they actually, they, they source their wines from completely clean ground because a lot of different wine companies are sourcing from the U.S. and they have different traces of arsenic and all this different stuff in the, it's amazing. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know enough about it. Yeah, phosphate free would be nice, right? Nice. So just no. buy quality wine, drink it, don't drink the bottle, or drink the bottle. You're not going to drink and drive because your butt's sitting at home. But the next day, start thinking, I got to rehydrate. That was a gift to myself last night, not I kicked my own butt. It's I gave myself the gift of relaxation and drinking with my friends on Zoom with five other families, and we're all having a happy hour together. Great. And then we say change rooms so we feel like we're bar hopping. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a natural at this. Um, a lot of our listeners sit in this, the car all day long, so I'm assuming that they're not breathing correctly. I'm assuming their hip flexors are contracted. Um, and I know that I live with chronic issues, pain, but I kind of ignore it. So I can literally change that pain and, and get rid of it just by doing what you're talking about. Um, first of all, what's my body trying to tell me mm -hmm. is what somebody should say if they're in pain. What's my body telling me? The answer, you're imbalanced somewhere, yep. deviated from this blueprint or design, yep. which we didn't make up as a company. We just happened to adopt it in 1971 as the blueprint yep. and then built the clinic systems from here. So yeah, uh, the car is not the problem. I get a lot of people who go, my car's killing me. What are you driving? I'm driving the Lexus 430, blah, 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 blah. They spent $95,000 in this car. And I said, do you really think that the Lexus engineers messed up on your seat? Tell you what, sell it. Go buy the Mercedes. They buy the Mercedes. They come in. Mercedes is killing me. I said, huh, seems like there's a common denominator here. No matter what car I get you into a next, go buy the Audi S6. Oh, great, great car, blah, 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 V10, you know, Love the car, hate the seat. Right. It's not the seat. It's the position of your pelvis. Maybe you're sitting in that seat with this. One pelvis here and one pelvis here. 
then your spine is cattywampus from that. And I'm gonna put my lumbar curve in here. Meanwhile, you're sitting like this and you put a lumbar curve in, it's automatic in your car. Now you're taking the spine put, that's collapsed like this. You're pushing something on the backside that make you do this. Yep. But your pelvis hasn't moved. You're actually shoving the vertebrae forward and giving yourself a slipped vertebrae. Welcome to stage one spondylolisthesis. Fix the body going to the seat. How long does this take every day to do? Is it like a daily regime? Is it an hour, two hours a day? Yeah, only do it on the days that you brush your teeth. So that'll be good, that'll be the rule. So for anybody from the UK, what is that, a Tuesday? Maybe, a, no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Um, I do it seven days a week. Okay. Um, I watched a movie last night on my back with my legs up over the block that I'm sitting on doing an exercise with these glasses on that allow me to watch TV. They're called bed spectacles. If you guys remember the uh, Jack Nicholson movie, um, Bucket List, when he was laying in bed watching TV, he had these glasses on where he didn't have to raise his head up. So my TV's down by my feet. I watched this movie. I was in there for two hours. Why? Because it sets me up in a better position today, emotionally, yep. physiologically. Physical's the anchor for this. This is the anchor for this. Without them, you're only doing one and it's not congruent. It's not permanent. So maybe I'm crazy, but I spend that much time doing it. Um, but I wrote some menus for some people this morning that I said, I know what's realistic. Here's four exercises before your workout. And here's a longer version at night of maybe six or seven. And then I give them the option on the nights where you don't have time, which I know you really do now, but on the nights you don't have time, you maybe did too much wine. Yep. Just skip to the exercise where you're laying on your back and, you know, relaxing down like that. Okay. Okay. So our business is, you know, the real estate world, it's very emotional. Um, the highs and lows are extreme and, um, and anything that I can bring our listeners, any strategy that can lessen their stress levels and help them perform better is a win-win for me. Look, I know um, I had a real estate agent who was one of my best friends. Um, I was, his, his, his brother was my best man at my wedding. Yep. Um, I never used him as my agent because I don't like to mix business with friendship. Like you're my, you don't need to know my income. I don't need you being my agent. I'll, I'll refer everybody to you. And I wasn't even looking at selling anyway till, a real, till this house came for sale. And we looked at it and said, yeah, we've always wanted to be in this house in this neighborhood. Let's make an offer. We went in and talked to the agent. And she said, where do you live? And I said, down there. She, I go, I have the four bedroom. And she said, I could sell that now. And I went, oh, so you're going to sell that now and I'm going to buy this. And she said, yeah, and I'll make sure that you get into this. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to push. I said, okay. You know, California, it's not like when something's a million dollars, you don't go, I'll give you 800,000. It's, yeah. I'll give you one million and one. <laughs> you know, I'll give you one million and two. Uh, I'll give you, if it's 500, I'll give you 505,000. They're bidding up like crazy. Well, this one luckily didn't bid up, which I was very happy about. And I wrote him a letter and said, we want to make this a home. This isn't just a purchase for us and blah, blah, blah. Family accepted it. She sold my other house. My friend in the real estate business, got wind of this and said, I heard you moved. I said, yeah, about a year ago or six weeks ago or whatever the hell it was because he, he had been away somewhere. And he said, oh, and I'm like, oh no, here it comes. And I didn't even think about his feelings when I did it. Which he shouldn't have. Well, the analogy is this. I know you now. Mm -hmm. You hurt your knee a week from now and you go to the typical allopathic medical world and end up with a knee surgery that a year later ends up causing your back to go out and then you end up on your back having a fusion. Yep. I could easily get my feelings hurt going, why didn't he call me? Right. Now I choose not to take things personally, but I do take them seriously. So the serious part of me says, I should deliver my message to Rich a little better so he had some trust in this. Not that we weren't still friends or whatever. So I got a hold of my friend and I said, dude, I did not even think about that because the lady made the offer to sell and buy and she decreased her percentage on both ends that actually saved me like $20,000. And she was like, I, I, I looked at it as a win-win. We haven't spoken since. Oh, oh we're talking uh, eight years. You know, and it, 
I had to just write it off and go, you know what? I, I wrote him a card and, you know, a dude writing a card, handwritten card. Okay. I must be in touch with my emotions. So I know how emotional the real estate world can be. Yep. Um, so I look at things like that and go, yeah, I, I had firsthand knowledge of it. So yep. my job, your job, my job is to provide a way out of that emotion by your staying in control of your physiological experience. Just like brushing your teeth. You don't really know what it does, but you do it every day out of faith. You don't really know what it does. Your, your doc doesn't give you the full on things of your, your six on the gum line here is now going to be a one because you did this and this and this over time. It's just, I think over time, I'm going to have better oral health. Right. The same thing for your ankles, your knees, your hips, and your shoulders. If you want congruent movement, which allows you to have better bowel movements, better breathing, um, easier menstrual cycles, hmm. as your physiological experience during that monthly gift, God, women are tougher than we are for sure. Sure. Are. But in that time, there's all kinds of things that go, hormonal release and all that. So what we want to realize is that once we change the physiological response, I get what I want because the posture is the foundation for it all. Is there providers up here in the Toronto market? Uh, I do have a, um, uh, I think someone trained who is going to open one of our clinics. Uh, she's a posture alignment specialist. She should be listed on our website, um, egoscue.com. Um, but everybody's working via Skype and FaceTime now. So somebody says to me, hey, yeah. Brian, I live, in, um, I live in Fiji. I know you don't have anybody here. Man, I got the book. And I said, well, why don't you let me take a look at you on Zoom? At least to tell you where to go in the book. I don't get anything out of it, maybe. Yeah. But a lot of times they go, wow, this is different customer service than I was experiencing anywhere else. But we offer that because now's the time for giving. You know, um, the, the time for giving is now. There's a guy in the marketing world um, on Instagram that if you're not following him as a, uh, a real estate person, um, it could make a huge difference. Let's see here. Uh, go to my messages. Yeah, I think, um, well, definitely we're going to talk about, you know, my daughter and myself. <clears throat> um, Scott Martin, I don't know. Uh, really good about the, um, he was just on Tony Rodriguez, uh, uh, get up and grow Facebook live, um, with Scott Martin. And they talked about now's the season of giving, um, the traditional marketing, uh, world that you guys know, you know, the funnel in, let's see what comes out. The serious leads. People are different because of this. People are different. So what I've adopted and what a lot of my therapists have adopted is the mindset, yeah, we're still traditionally marketing and it's gonna create the bump where it needs to go, I get it. And what we're going to do with that when the lead comes in, when can I see you? Instead of let me answer your question via email. Yeah. Yeah, this, is, um, this is a powerful format, even all of our clients, we communicate this way. It's the best, uh, yeah. Well look, when I wanna look at a house, I'm going to Zillow or Redfin and all that stuff, and I'm looking at the 360 view and I'm going, my God, thank you for putting this in there yeah, because yeah. I don't want to travel five miles to look at that house right now. Yeah, we're seeing virtual showings now and virtual um, transactions. So the market definitely is adjusting quite well up here and we'll see how it goes. You know, Brian, I really appreciate you. Um, I think you entered my life for a reason and uh, I'm looking forward to doing some work personally with you. Um, and I'm going to report back or maybe over the next 12 weeks to to our listeners about what has transpired physically for me and emotionally. Um, and I'm looking forward to that. Um, is, so there is a book though as well. Yeah, the pain-free book. And I'm sorry I didn't bring it out, but it's red, white, and blue. Yep. Pain-free by Pete Egoscu. Egoscu's back here, how you spell it. Yep. Um, you won't be tested on the spelling, but you will be tested on the pronunciation. Okay. Um, great book, read the first three chapters. And then we're actually rewriting the uh, pain-free 2.0 right now. So hopefully that'll possibly be done by the end of the year. Um, and they can get that anywhere, Amazon. Amazon, if you just type, go into Amazon and just type in pain-free book. It'll be the first thing that comes up. It's red, white, and blue. Yep. You know, we, uh, the best part is that I was talking to Pete Egoscu maybe 20 years ago, more than that, almost 30, when he had the Egoscu method of health through motion book out. Yep. And a picture of him on the front like this. Great book. One of my favorite books. Try to market the Egoscu method of health through motion to your friend as a book to go buy. The what? 
So the next book was called Pain Free for a Reason, and it went up into the million sold, and the next one's going to be bigger. Where we are as a company, strategy-wise, um, not from a business standpoint, just from a philosophical standpoint, rewriting our curriculum to get people certified into what we do, called Posture Alignment Specialist. You can go to agoskewinstitute.com to check that out. Um, when you guys get a hold of me, uh, there's, a, there's a website, igoscu.com slash digital. Yep. You fill out that information and just say, I came from Peak Results Podcast with Rich. What are you interested in? Whether it's the certification or the therapy or just getting up on Skype, Zoom, or FaceTime, we'll do it, no problem. But, you know, interact with us. That's, I don't do this just to waste an hour of my time to give information about how great this method is. I know how amazing it is. It's been 30 years this year why I've been here. Why I've been here, not I've been here. Why I've been here is because the, the relationship with Pete Agoscu and his thought is just have a conversation. Yep. Find out what their needs are and fill their needs. And that might be you're not ready for our therapy because you're asking some questions like you want me to fix you. Um, hope is not a strategy. Gee, Brian, I hope you can help me. By the time we're done, I'm going to get rid of that language. We're going to get rid of hope and we're going to go to belief. Yeah. Like you're at belief. You're going, I'm doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a lot of people, I'm doing this. Well, use this gift of time. Well, you know what? I've done it all. I mean, I've done chiro, osteo, uh, I've seen physios. I, it just, you know, and you still have challenges. So um, I have to take more control of my own body and go to the, and, and use these sorts of strategies to fix myself. Everything else I'm doing is not working anymore. Look, bro, you have kids. So I'll show you this. Uh, you have one kid. How many kids? Three. Okay, I'll be done here in a second. This is a 14-year-old elite soccer club. Look at their little builds around that raft. And then look at the kid in the center where his back is facing you. Yep. Okay, I've been working on that kid since he was day one. He didn't have a choice. So he started wanting to stand up at 12 months. I gave him a little tap on the back of the head and knocked him back down to his hands and knees. Then I moved to the ground with my family, basically, and said, don't give him a reason to stand up ever again. Because little kids see you and they want to do this. Keep right. him on the ground and let him crawl for a little bit longer. He went another three months crawling. Now the benefit of crawling, it's a primal movement pattern that creates the athlete that you truly wanna be. Now what I'm gonna show you now is a 14 year old, same year, track meet, first 200 meter run ever in his life, never been trained on it, but look at, he's in the back position in the white shirt. Yep. Age 14. Yeah, wow. 200 meters, and he wins by 40 meters. He just blew everyone away. Why? Because I gave him the unfair advantage. Uh, he was born into my family, so he didn't have a choice. But it's not about do it. He's literally playing Xbox to the point where he's getting paid to play now. <laughs> and he's a D1 soccer player in California. But he's sitting doing this. Yeah, and today, because he didn't do it yesterday, he knows today's my workout with my dad and then a three mile run to the highest point in San Diego. So, but it's in his psyche now. Right. I've gotta be ready for when college picks back up, I will not be the freshman going into my new college behind the European guys there. He's going in going, I'm owning this. Right. right. It's a mindset, right? Like it's a, but it's not a, my dad told me to, it's I've accepted it, I believe it, that's where you are. And now I know why Tony Robbins has you at his events. Look, that's been an amazing relationship. When Pete introduced me to him years ago, Tony fell off a horse and all that stuff. Six foot seven, falls off a polo horse and blows his hip out. I had no idea who he was. He was doing this power move and I'm like, Pete, who is this guy? What? He goes, oh, you don't know who Tony Robbins is? I said, no idea. So 27, 28 years ago, we met. And that day he got out of pain, stood up, all six foot seven, eight of them goes, big hug and I'm like okay here I am hugging a dude is anybody watching you know I didn't know I was coming from the east coast bro 
I just got off the phone with his wife this morning on Skype because we're already talking about some stuff for her and then for the company. But you got to realize that it's a, uh, once a guy like that sinks his teeth into something that works, he's not letting it go because he knows that everybody who goes to these events need this. And everybody thinks of him as a crazy motivator. Like he's a motivator. He's not a motivator. I don't work for him, so I'm just going to tell you the truth. I would call BS if I smelled it. Yep. He is a strategist to get your mind out of the way of your heart, your instinct. That's what he is. I appreciate what you do. I'm very excited to do some work with you guys, and uh, I appreciate you giving us some time. Because once you give it, you never get it back. So I appreciate it, and I know our listeners are going to really enjoy this podcast and um, what is the best way for them to reach you? There's a couple ways. They, um, I'll give you the, first of all, I'll put it in the show notes and I'll put it in the back end for sure. Yep. I'll just show them here. The, uh, this is my Instagram. Yep. Um, I'm in competition with my kids. So I expect everybody to follow right, the Brian Bradley, but, and I, I only put the in there because Brian Bradley was taken by the Tampa Bay lightning hockey, right. hockey player, the same name. Yep. This is our company one which has some really good content on it. It's just under Egoscue Method. Perfect. And the same thing for Facebook, the Egoscue Method or the Brian Bradley. And then uh, that digital site where I gave you, egoscue.com forward slash digital is where you're going to uh, bring your questions or just DM me on you know, uh, Facebook or uh, Instagram. And I'll give you my email just in case it's... Uh, B Bradley at egoscue.com. So my first initial last name, B B R A D L E Y at egoscue.com. And that's one of the easy ways to get a hold of me too. And guys, because you own technology, we can see you anywhere for this. And Zoom had over two point some million, two hundred some million downloads. That's what we're on now. Well, I know. Well, I'm looking forward to participating and taking control of certain things in my life. So I appreciate you. Um, thank you, Laura for introducing me to you. I appreciate it. She's a beast. She's awesome. She's my coach. And uh, hopefully I'll get her on here eventually. Um, I appreciate you, Brian, very, very much. And we will be in contact very, very soon. Thank you again for educating our listeners um, about how they can take control of their physicality and their emotions through their physicality. So Glad, thank to, help. You. Glad to help. Have an amazing afternoon and stay safe out there in California. Yeah, we live in a tough spot. Blue skies and sun and nobody on the street. Quit rubbing it in. We had snow two days ago, so. Right? Yeah, I moved out of Pennsylvania for that reason. Right. Well, you could sponsor me into the States. I love to move, so. <laughs> Thanks again, Brian. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. If you like what you've heard and you're interested in seeing if you are fit to work with Peak Results Academy, here's what I want you to do next. Head over to peakresultsacademy.com slash call. That's peakresultsacademy.com slash call and book an appointment to speak with our team. We'll get on the phone with you for about 45 minutes and get you crystal clear on three things. Number one, what do you really want out of life and your business? Number two, what is not working for you today? And number three, the exact strategy you should be using to create massive change in these areas. Remember, changing your life and creating massive results does not happen by itself. You need expert guidance to make it happen. We're helping clients all over the world create peak results in their health, in their businesses, and in their personal lives. To see if we can help you do the same, head over to peakresultsacademy.com call. We'll chat soon.